So when you click the run, the wallop will do two things. It will do two separate different analysis behind the, the, um, behind the screen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> one is called limit equilibrium analysis. So uh, it's just the one you ask, uh, well, what's the stability of the wall, how they analyze it. So it's called limit equilibrium analysis. The second is a full stru soil structure interaction analysis. So it's just a beam, you attach all the springs, you apply all the pressure on top, and you have the spring stiffness defined, you have the, the lateral loading, and you have the support. Then it's a structural analysis for you, basically. And uh, it will give you all the shear force spinning moment uh, and deflection. Um, so it's very similar to structural analysis, but the difference is, is the soil is model as spring. So in structural analysis, usually they have pinned connection, fixed connection, but they don't have a lot of springs. But in geotech, there are lots of springs. So that's the difference. Okay. So stability, it's really straightforward. It's one way or another. So Wallop will detect how many anchors or struts you have. If you have two uh, anchors, uh, you have all the degree of freedom restraint. So if wall of C you define and use two anchors, it will skip the whole process of stability. It will say it's stable. Yeah. But this under one condition is your anchor is strong enough. They don't snap, okay? When your anchor is uh, actually strong enough, there's no way to rotate. You don't have rotation, you don't have rotation because it's all restrained. And you don't have the sliding because it's all restrained. So there's no failure mechanism anymore as long as you design this anchor correctly. It will give you output of the anchor force, make sure that you design the anchor accordingly. So that's the one of the functions. So if you have two, it won't, won't uh, do this analysis. But if you have no anchor or just one anchor, so this is one anchor, this is no anchor, and it will do a, a limited equilibrium analysis for you. So what it assumes is it's fully active, fully passive, down to a certain point. It's called a, a, a point of rotation or a pivot point. Simply because sometimes the wall, if the embedment is really deep, uh, it's not always rotate from the very base. It's, start to reverse the rotation at the midpoint here. So you have passive, you have active, and you have passive. And uh, I mean, when you pass this pivot point, it's reverse. Because when you pass it, okay, your wall rotate the other way, right? The bottom section of the wall actually ro rotate towards the active side. So that becomes passive. That's active. So you need to do the, the reverse of it. So now this becomes passive and this becomes active. But the, the software will do that for you. Both sides. Both sides. Yeah. So for this one, now you have an anchor, but it's still a rotation direction. It's the, it's the backward rotation. <laughs> The toe kicks out instead of instead of falling down. The toe kicks out because you have a support here. This one won't fail, but the toe will kick out. So that's the reverse, and it will work out a factor safety for you. So it's simple, it's straightforward. Why it's simple and straightforward? Because it's always assume a KA KP condition has reached, All right? Um, as I said before, the reason why KA and KP is not always reached is because you have these anchors, you have these struts actually restrain it, then you don't have sufficient room um, to move. But for, for this case, because you don't have anchors, or you only have one anchors at the top, so you, you still have the room to move. So in this case, it's just simply assume it's KA and KP, so it's straightforward. It can calculate the effect of safety uh, at a given toll elevation. So if you define the toll, it will give you a factor of safety. And then you can also calculate the required toll elevation for a given factor of safety. So it's reverse calculation. If you give him 
and it, it will tell you the toll you need to go to. So say if you have a, a, a wall, two meters of it, okay? It gives you a factor of safety, two. And you say, and your clients say, that's more than enough. Usually for permanent case, we're looking at a 1.5 factor of safety. Um, that's two, so that might be a, a waste of money to go that deep. So what's the toll we require to reach 1.5 instead? One of has option allows you to do that. So you can say, I need a factor of safety 1.5, and tell me what's the, what's the embedment I need. So the reverse calculation. So it assumes a, a linear stress distribution. As I said, it's linear, okay? It's just a straight line, okay? No indication of movement. So this, this limit equilibrium analysis, it tells you it fails or not, but won't tell you what's the wall movement. So not applicable to statically indeterminate structure. So as I said, it's either no anchor or one anchor. But you have two anchors, it becomes uh, statically indeterminate. So your restraint is, has a higher degree of the uh, degree of freedom in the whole system. So you have multiple solutions potentially, so it's not suitable. Um, you can do drained or undrained, but not both. So you need to run, to run two cases separately. Uh, it's not suitable for non-uniform surcharge or burns. Um, so basically, that's the assumption, but if you have a bur burn, now it's hard to calculate because the, the distribution is not linear anymore. If you have a surcharge like this, now it's hard to, to say because the pressure is not like that. Okay. You, might, you might have a more critical wedge this way, so it's not suitable. 